one. <laughs> I will share my screen in a second. Um, I'll just talk for a little bit um, about various things, and then I'll show a little bit of a demo. Um, so I know everyone's been waiting for release 1.20. Um, and I know it's been a long time. Um, there's been a few things since the last meetup um, that's happened in the meantime. Uh, last week we had a Everything Open 2023 conference, which is the evolution of the Linux conference in Australia. Um, so I was at that and it was good. There was lots of people interested in open source software and um, not just Linux, but other things these days. Uh, there was talk about MicroPython using it. Um, University of Adelaide has developed some hardware that you can attach to a bike. And when you ride the bike, it monitors the distance of passing cars using lasers. So there's two lasers which measure distance, one on the front and one on the back of the bike. Um, and as the car goes past, it logs that distance. And uh, MicroPython PyBoard D is inside that. And it's um, used uh, to log the data and then you can download the data at the end and have a look to see what the pattern is of passing cars. And the idea is to have lots of people around uh, Adelaide and other cities in Australia use this device to get some information about, well, motorcycle, uh, motor car behavior with cyclists on the road. That was an interesting talk. Um, and good to see MicroPython used in the wild like that. Uh, there was, yeah, lots of other good talks. One particularly I was interested in was about open source licensing and open source terms. And um, I learned a bit more about how license, how open source licenses work. Um, but yeah, I won't go into any details here, but it was very, very enlightening actually. Um, in particular about the license of a project when it has many components, all of which are differently licensed. Um, and the idea there is that the, the, the project itself doesn't have a license, but if you use a project, you just have to make sure that you comply with all the licenses individually. So MicroPython being MIT licensed means that the code we write is MIT licensed, but the whole project itself, if you use it, is um, sort of a myriad, a collection of licenses. Um, and you just have to be careful with each one that you comply. But of course we pick licenses, which are compatible with, um, MIT, I guess compatible, compatible, but, um, sometimes a little bit more obviously restrictive, you know, Apache and BSD, you have to do a bit more, but, um, at least you can comply with all of them and they are all in the vein of MIT. So in particular, not GPL. Um, so. The summary is, well, we keep a, a top level license file in the project, which describes all the licenses that are used. And if you're using MicroPython, um, well, in anything, but in particular in a commercial product, um, you should check the licenses to see how to comply with them. Um, if you have to put a notice anywhere in documentation, for example. Um, but yeah, it was, it was very, it was very good to learn more about that. Uh, so that, uh, meant that I didn't have enough time to work on the release, but also we are waiting for Bluetooth support for the RP2040 chip, which is pretty much ready now. Um, and we were waiting on a bug fix, which I think we'll just work around instead of waiting for the bug fix. Um, it just means you can't use Bluetooth and Wi-Fi at the same time at this stage. So you can only use Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. Um, on the RP2040. And when the bugs fixed, we'll be able to use both. So that's, um, that was what was taking up time and then waiting for that to work. So I'll just, I can do a quick demo of how this, of using Bluetooth on the RP2040 on a Pico W, um, I should say. Um, the, okay, is that, work but this window here that's better yeah sorry so i should have <clears throat> it's not well rp2040 also already can have bluetooth if you have a like some of the arduino rp20 base boards have a um 
Bluetooth capable, um, I think, but the Pico W with its Wi-Fi chip also supports Bluetooth. So here we have, um, I have two boards connected. Um, I think you can still see my video, but there's just two Pico W's uh, connected to my computer. Um, so the Wi-Fi, this, this chip here is Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Um, and oops, make sure they don't touch metallically. Um, here's your MP remote. So I can do um, like, I have this, um, it's not merged yet to master, but there's a pull request there and it has, uh, it has Bluetooth support on, on this. So import Bluetooth and yep, Bluetooth.ble. I mean, we're looking at a web browser at the moment, at least I am. Is that what, is it going to be on screen? Uh, that's really. So is that everybody else remote seeing that or am I, is it just me on my end? What was on the web browser? Uh, Adafruit. Yeah. Okay. That was the previous page that Zoom was on. Maybe it just had not updated. Um, desktop one would work better, wouldn't it? Is that better? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for that, Andy. Right. Um, <clears throat> right. So here, the, uh, on the left here, I have two boards, one on the left, one on the right for term prompts for them, but you can see, I can input Bluetooth and, and access the Bluetooth module. So I have a, um, I have a simple gap scan script that I can run here. Um, which, which scans for all Bluetooth devices and prints out, well, <clears throat> some security compromising data, like the Mac, Mac address of the Bluetooth device and it's, uh, advertising, advertising payload. Um, so you can see there's quite a lot of Bluetooth devices around me. Um, but the idea here is to make the, uh, the Pico W into a temperature sensor. Um, so there's this example temperature sensor code here. Um, so what it does is it just, um, in an infinite, it advertises itself as a temperature sensor and in an infinite loop, um, just randomly changes the temperature to some random number. It's not, it's not a real temperature, but that's just the example. Of course you can make it real or some other data. Um, so this example is, has been in the MicroPython repository for a while. So you can have a look at it yourself. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's not that not complicated, it's only a hundred lines. Um, and then on, so that's on the, on the left and on the right, we'll run the temperature central, which is something that will connect to a peripheral. So on the left, we'll have one board, one Pico W running as a temperature peripheral device, um, like a temperature sensor, for example. And then on the right, it's like, for example, your phone is central. BLE central means that you're going to connect to a peripheral, um, and then retrieve the temperature from that. So this on the right here is a little bit more complicated, 250 lines or so. Um, it, uh, it scans for a, um, sensor and looks for the correct UUID for the sensor that the, the correct, you know, advertising as a, as a temperature sensor. Um, and then once it's connected, it just, uh, in an infinite loop, every two seconds, it requests to read the, um, the temperature. Um, so as I said, you can look at that, um, code yourself, but in, so in Bluetooth, there's the concept of central and peripheral and server and client, but, um, those terms are not, you know, always dependent. They're actually independent. So a peripheral can be a server or a client and a central can be a server or a client. Um, but what's happening here is on the left, we'll have the peripheral being a server. So even though the peripheral is sort of the tiny IOT device, it's still a server because it's serving up information. It's serving up the temperature and you've got to connect to that server and, and, and retrieve its data. Um, and as the central, you're a client, a gap client. So you're the one who's accessing the server. 
uh, so it's just like a web, you know, you can think of it web server and a browser is your, is the client. So when you're running, when you're looking at some web page, there's a server in the cloud that's giving it to you and your web browser is a client and in Bluetooth, um, your phone can act like a client to access the temperature sensors around it, which are servers. Um, and the term central and peripheral is actually independent from server and client. Um, so it, it, Bluetooth is, yeah, it's, there's a few things you have to understand about it. Um, it's, it's, it's definitely more complicated than a simple, you know, TCP IP networking where, um, yeah, well, we're all, most of us are used to, uh, TCP IP and Bluetooth is, is very different. Um, and I would say more complicated, uh, even though I think it was intended to be simpler. Um, so we'll just run this, run this example here. Uh, I'm going to have to reset this first. So, uh, run BLE temperature. Okay. So that, I think that worked, uh, and temperature central on the right. So now when I run the central, it should connect and then start downloading, um, temperature readings every few seconds. Okay. So it says it found the temperature sensor, um, called RP2 temp. And then it's Mac address was there and it says it's connected. And every two seconds you can see it's retrieving some data. And on the left, the, the server or the peripheral is saying that it got connected to, and then it has, it's having read requests every two seconds. So that's, um, pretty straightforward and that's, well, that's how Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth works. So with, with MicroPython, you can implement temperature sensors or many other Bluetooth devices. Um, I'll just maybe change a few things to show you exactly, uh, how it works. So if we stop that on the left, you can see it got disconnect, it got a disconnect event. Um, and then hopefully, well, I could, I can rerun that. Um, let's just make it read faster. So every say one second or every half a second, let's see if, run, if it can support it, work that fast. Yep. Okay. So the peripheral, when it got disconnected, it re-advertised. So the central, the, the central can see it again. Um, so now we're reading interval of half a second. Uh, so let's stop that disconnect and let's reset that. And then let's say that we'll, instead of return, we can just return just to show you that it's returning a number that we've set here. Um, so T we can just make say T equals 42 and just leave it at that. Uh, and I won't change the temperature. Um, so there that's running and then we should just receive the number 42 over and over again. Yeah. You can see that's, that's working. So there you go. That's really the bulk of what I wanted to show that Bluetooth does work on the, um, Pico W, uh, as I said, at the moment, there's a bug where it can't work with Wi-Fi. Well, it does, but eventually data gets corrupted. Um, so yeah, I've got some tests where <clears throat> you, you do a lot of TCP data transfer and also lots of Bluetooth transfer at the same time. And eventually it will fail. But, um, when that's fixed, uh, you, sh you can do both of them at the same time, which is pretty cool. You can make a, something that's a web server and a Bluetooth device at the same time. Um, and obviously with MicroPython, it's MicroPython makes it a lot easier to do something like that. You can use async IO, um, and you can have one task, which is doing the sort of web, uh, Wi-Fi stuff and another task, which is doing another async IO task, which is doing the Bluetooth, be it a central or peripheral acting like a server or a client. Um, and having async IO there, obviously you can then make other tasks that do other things like control motors or lights. Um, so it makes it, I think quite straightforward to make, uh, some pretty interesting devices that, that use a lot of 
different peripherals at once. So once, so this is near, this is pretty much ready to merge and then we'll be set to make a release. So finally, I know it's taken a long time. Uh, there's also been a bunch of other bug fixes that have just kept coming in, which is great mm -hmm. to fix bugs. Um, just, uh, it takes time. So with that, I'm done. I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, did you cover when one point twenty is coming? <laughs> we want to even want to date. Could you um, whatever I say. Well, what's the date <laughs> yeah, today? The twenty second of March. It could be by the end of this month. That would be nice. I've, that means I've got eight days. It's a short week. Yeah, it's only a week or so. It's... Um, that's what I'll aim for. Because this, yeah, this is this is nearly ready. Oh, the other nice thing that happened recently is we got back 20 or 30 K on the Pico and the Pico W and all RP 2040 boards as well, because, um, there was a whole bunch of Ram that was unused. Um, <clears throat> so that's a nice bonus. That's awesome. Has anyone got any other random questions for them? Yeah, yeah, random questions are good. Uh, Robert's been doing a fair bit of work with, um, uh, what am I trying to say, PWM, uh, making them a bit more consistent across ports. So that's, I, I didn't have a slide for it, but as soon as I saw Robert's name, I was like, oh, you've got to remember to talk about that. Um, uh, so currently there's a couple of differences between some of the ports on our PWM set up and when it starts and, uh, and so on and so forth. And so Robert's been making it, Robert in particular, but there's also been a couple of others who have um, been trying to make that consistent. There's some PRs open. If you've got opinions on that, please go comment on it. Um, Damien, I'm not sure how across that you are. And... Yeah, I was um, so initially part of that people. discussion. Um, I have to catch up on what's been happening. But yeah, any, Robert, yeah. did you want to comment on that at all, Robert, or is it just goes uh, to go check well, out? I'm at, at the point at the moment where I'm kind of stuck because uh, we need a decision on how to go on. So I made the some the most of the ports identical to a certain point. Uh, ESP32 is a little bit hanging because um, uh, the way man who met that um, is kind of not answering at the moment. So I asked him to change a little a few things to make it compatible, but he doesn't respond. But he's in a war zone, so it's pretty busy, I think. What's the <laughs> what's the um what was the thing that you're blocked on for decisions or is it a multiple things? Uh well, that's it. The, the thing to decide is how to go on with um, the D init behavior at the init, and whether we should have a kind of start stop method for PWM. Okay. Yeah. So we we could go on with the actual state because that makes things much more uh, unique at the moment already, and then make things uh, decide things later on. Well, okay. I mean, I'm sure I will catch up on the conversation and, but yeah. Um, yes, let's, let's not talk too technical now. Cool. But yeah, uh, thanks. Okay. That's, that's